Prime time right here on cable TV. It's taped with Rabbi Doug next. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. We are here today in Lincolnwood, Illinois. And I am here with my very good friend, my colleague, and my mentor, Rabbi Victor Weisberg. Rabbi, welcome to the show. It is such a great honor to be with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, Rabbi Weisberg is retired. He is just about 96 years old, I believe. He is the senior uh, reform rabbi in the Chicago area, and he is also uh, one of the most brilliant rabbinical scholars that I've ever known. Um, I had the great honor recently of officiating, co-officiating with him at a funeral, and I said to him, you know, Rabbi, I've always wanted to have you on the show. Um, I'd like to, to have you on, and he agreed, and here we are. Um, we've uh, traveled together for APAC, for the Board of Rabbis, to, to different events and different speeches and different event, uh, things from the JUF, and uh, I, I've had the honor of spending much time with him over the years, um, including in his years when he was the rabbi of Temple Bethel, which the building now is known as uh, Congregation Adashi Shuren, across from the Bernard Horwich JCC. Uh, Temple Bethel, Rabbi, um, you were the founding rabbi, I presume, right? No, no, you were not. No, you were no, no, second? No. First of all. Uh, in, in West Rogers Park, I mean. Oh, yes. But you were the founding rabbi on West Rogers Park, but it came from the west side, right? No, it didn't come from the west side. Where did it come from it originally? It came from Logan Square. Oh, Logan Square, north side. It, it, the, better described as the northwest side. Right. The reason for that is that Bethel was originally called Rose Face Shalom. Mm -hmm. And it was the first synagogue opened after the Chicago fire. Uh -huh. Okay? And it was located at that time where the Ohio Street off ramp is from uh, the Kennedy Expressway. Uh, practically in that uh, circle. Mm -hmm. And then it, it was on uh, Fry Street on the northwest side, and then it was on Crystal Street, just north of Division Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, in 19... It's Humboldt Park area, right? Humboldt Park? Yes. Right. In 1923, Bethel moved to Palmer Square, which is two blocks south of Fullerton and Humboldt Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And they had a group of rabbis. They uh, survived the Depression and the, some other bad news. And uh, they had several rabbis before me. Sure, sure. And um, I came there. Uh, my wife, Tamara, and my uh, infant daughter had gone back to Israel. And I got a phone call uh, in the middle of the day saying, Rabbi Weisberg, we hear you're interested in our congregation. And I didn't even know that it existed, okay, because I was the assistant at uh, Isaiah Israel in Hyde Park. So I said, maybe, mm -hmm. okay. So they invited me to come north, okay which was terra incognita. I'd never been north, okay? I was in the loop as a... Right, that I was, was as far north as you were before that. Because I was a student at the U of C, so mm -hmm. I would go to the show. Sure. So, I was invited to the president's home. I got there late, about 45 minutes late, because I got lost, mm -hmm. okay? And his wife was livid. I ruined her dinner. <laughs> okay, so I said, "Well, that's it, low fidelity." So uh, I made light of this and apologized, and they asked me to come back to see the committee. Okay, and uh, they asked me a group of questions, and and I was very forthright. They wanted to know why I would come. 
I said, well, um, it's a small congregation and uh, it allows me time to study for a doctorate, probably at the U of C. Okay. Um, and they wanted to know if I was interested in the neighborhood or in the larger community. I said, you know, uh, Chicago is a very strange city because it's a city made up of uh, individual neighborhoods. And uh, I believe that um, the Logan Square neighborhood is an interesting uh, neighborhood and the congregation sounds like it's small but good, okay? So uh, we agreed. And it was, I was a greenhorn because uh, Tamar was out of town and I was glad to, to take a, a congregation of my own. So I accepted it with, without discussing finances or any of the side issues, okay? So I came. Logan Square. Logan Square, it was Palmer Square, but Logan Square. Uh -huh. And I came and I brought the Magain David with me. And there was a, an up, uproar. Mm -hmm. They had never had a Zionist uh, thing. So I said, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I was in the Navy, and when the Admiral came aboard, the, he brought his flag with me. So I'm your new Admiral. I'm, I was a seaman, by the way. Uh -huh. I'm your new Admiral. When I leave, I take my flag with me. When I'm here, it means that I'm in, on duty, okay? When you see that flag, you know I'm on duty, period, okay? So right away, the congregation had about 150 families, 25 families quit. <laughs> so I said, okay, look, let's see, I have a two-year contract. Let's see what we do with, with this thing, okay? If I can help you, I will. If I can't help you, I'll take my leave. So it worked out. There you go. What year did you move to West Rogers Park? Okay, we moved. Uh, I came in 54 to the congregation. Uh, they had uh, uh, predecessors who had tried to move the congregation and were not able. And then, uh, uh, it's a long story, but uh, we started looking for a place because uh, Superintendent Willis of the Chicago um, schools had stopped the ability of students from transferring from one high school to another. And the high school that they wanted the Jewish students from my congregation to go to was Thule High School. Which is where my grandmother, who, um, this, she would have been 109 now, um, she, she graduated from Thule. Okay. Um, Roberto Clemente now on Western yes. Avenue, but it was Thule High School. And uh, she grew up in Humble Park. Right, so now, they wouldn't allow students to go to Roosevelt or... Which was in Albany Park. Von Steuben. Which Roosevelt. also Albany Park. That's the only two that they were looking at. So the parents began to move north, okay? So uh, we looked around and then a group of uh, people, oh, one Friday night I was talking about the Hanukkah Christmas uh, crisis, I called it, okay? And I said, you can't substitute something with nothing. I said, if you want to keep uh, Hanukkah, uh, don't st uh, start with uh, the size of a Christmas tree. I said, you've got to start with making Hanukkah a Jewish moment that uh, requires you and me to relive it, okay? And there was a family of strangers who came to the service, 
and he called me, his name was Lou Sapira. he called me, he said, uh, I want to take you to lunch. Okay, I said, Mr. Sapira, uh, I'll come if you do it the Weisberg way. So he said, what's the Weisberg way? Come on, we'll go to lunch and I'll show you. Okay, so I picked up the check, okay. I, I didn't like to be treated, uh, I didn't like to snore from people. It wasn't my uh, way. Uh, I paid my way. Uh, I made my way. So he uh, he called me back. He said, I'm a part of a group of about 50 congregants from another congregation that we would like to join your congregation. Okay. Listen, if you have 125 and suddenly you get 50. 175 oh, families on Oh my goodness like, gracious, okay. Rabbi. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, I shook up a lot of uh, people because uh, I became the mower de Asra. Mm -hmm. It was my congregation and uh, I was in charge of the religious aspects of the congregation. We're the rabbi. And the funding was up to the Balabatin, mm -hmm. period. Okay. The congregants. And I never uh, took part in the funding. I only took part in the religious aspects and the educational aspects of the congregants. And it was good like that. So uh, I didn't, didn't mess around with finances, okay? But I did tell people who wanted uh, to send the children to my religious school I'm sorry, we only take uh, children of members. So one fellow, doctor, said, um, I don't want to be a member. I said, if you don't want to be a member, you don't want to educate your child to live in a Jewish co community. I said, you just want to hop, um, what, for a, a bar mitzvah? It, it, it's meaningless. So he joined. Mm -hmm. And his children loved it, okay? Now, so we moved north and we what had... What year was that? What year was that? 56. 1956 that you moved to West Rogers Park. Yes. And, and so we, you were, we had, which is how I opened the show, saying he was the founding rabbi of the building in West Rogers Park, yeah. um, uh, which we is on Tui Avenue across from the JCC. We weren't in, even in a building. You we had an office on Pratt in California. Huh? right behind Rabbi Matanki's shul, and... Um, Which was at that time, uh, I can't remember who the rabbi was oh, originally. Rabbi Meshelov. Rabbi Me oh, so this Rabbi Meshelov was already there by then? Yes. Rabbi so, Meshelov was already there by then? Yes. Uh, rabbi Moses Meshelov, the uh, rabbi, the longest rabbi of Congregation Kids. Right, K K I N S. K I N S. Okay. And that's so, Israel Anche Sfard, yes, which became Anche right. Ashkenaz. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we had a, a store, and the, there was the office in the front, or a meeting room in the front, mm -hmm. and the Hebrew school in the back, okay? And, uh, and we rented a space for a Sunday religious school from one of the public schools, okay? Is that Boone? Exactly. Boone School. Oh. So, um, so, uh, People started coming, okay, and uh, they liked what they they found, okay. And I'll tell you why. The first thing was that <clears throat> the password is relationship. I, w I wasn't involved in a lot of activities to make my name great and uh, have an uh, office uh, uh, of one kind or another. I was the rabbi, the motor de Asra, okay? That was my place and that was my work, okay? And so uh, we got to know the congregants and the company got to know me and my wife and my children, okay? All, all combined, because all my children were born in the congregation. 
My oldest daughter was just a, three years old when she came. My son was born on uh, uh, in when Logan Square on Humble Boulevard, and my older youngest daughter was born when we moved into Bethel on Tui Avenue. Uh huh. And originally, we thought we were going to move to Foster Avenue. Bud Long Woods area. What? Bud Long Woods area. Yes, exactly. And um, uh, we were looking there, and it was interesting. Uh, but this group, we were all in, Lo in uh, uh, Logan Square. Roger Square. Square. No, the, the group that joined oh, the us. 50, the 50 families. Yes, we uh -huh. were all in uh, West Rogers Park. Uh -huh. Skokie didn't even exist. Right. right. Okay. And... Uh, and Lincolnwood, the Lincolnwood community didn't, didn't exist. exist. Right. It was Judenrein, by the mm -hmm. way. So we started, and uh, one family, okay, we were going to buy a lot of real estate. And one family from this group, uh, the Naxon family, okay, had the the lot next to us, which she, they donated. It's now the parking lot of Ayeshur, okay? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we had parking, and we had a little building, okay? And the Sunday that we dedicated the building, we went to 250 religious school students in one weekend. Wow. And uh, so we had to add to the building where the library and school was and offices and a basement for a school, okay. Um, and the congregants were all into this thing, okay all young couples with, with children and things, and a, a lot of veterans, okay? Okay, so, um, and being from the Navy was a little different, you know, I wasn't a chaplain, I was a sailor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we did things the Navy way, okay? And uh, the congregation grew. And, uh, it grew in three ways, okay? One, the school grew. One, the youth group became the largest youth group, reform youth group, in the city, in the whole of the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. My youth group had more uh, members than all the rest of the youth groups at, at one time, mm -hmm. okay? And I was totally involved with these kids, okay? And I was always a little crazy. So, so we did crazy things. We had circus in the woods, okay? So we went to the forest preserve. We built a sukkah. We had a service. We were doing things like this. Or, or I took them on a retreat between the high school semesters. I used to take 95, 100 students wow, wow, wow. by train up to Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. In All in Sang. Yes. All in Sang Ruby Institute. Okay. Camp. So, and that was between semesters. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we were on this lake. So, on Shabbat evening after... Motzei Shabbat. Yes, Motzei Shabbat. Shabbat. Saturday night. I walked them across the lake to the monastery, okay? Now they thought this was the height of adventure <laughs> because we were walking across the lake, the frozen lake, sure. okay? And this whole gang is growing and singing and shouting and laughing and they hear the ice crack and they're gonna drown. But you know, the lake was so shallow that it came up to your puppet, you know, so, <laughs> so I knew that I wasn't going to lose anybody. Okay, so 
So kids brought their families. Wow. Okay. So we started a young married group. And as time passed, we started a group of Chavurot. As time more passed, I got a grant from uh, an agency and we started senior groups. Okay. So we had children's groups, high school groups, young married groups, school parents group, and senior groups, which was an amazing thing because many times the young married uh, families would move out of West Rogers Park. Uh, by the way, many of them moved into Lincolnwood, mm -hmm. and some moved into Southern Skokie, okay, where there was nobody, uh, no synagogues. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then they started moving farther north, and at that point, the parents said, the parents, the children of the original parents said, mm -hmm. we want to have a uh, Hebrew school up north because it's impossible to go south in, in the rush hour and back, okay? After the kids get out of school. Yes. So we rented, we bought uh, three acres on Wagner right next to Beth Shalom, okay? which is another story that I won't go into. Mm -hmm. um, the Conservative Synagogue in Northbrook. Yes. It was, mm -hmm. it was, you're on my turf. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of my reformed congregants, congregant, uh, reformed colleagues, when I asked if I could have my students transfer to their religious school and would pay the tuition, they looked at me like a, uh, why would they take me in? I'm, I'm nobody with nothing to offer. Uh, you're on your own, okay? So I was on my own, okay, which isn't bad, okay? Uh, so th we had Hebrew school in this building. It was a house, it was a mansion. And we were gonna build on a three and a half acre, you could build something, okay? We got a lot of opposition from our neighbors. We decided we'd go elsewhere. In the meantime, uh, then they started asking for Friday night services. Then Up they, north. Yes. So then I took on an associate. Okay. And uh, is that Rabbi Bob? Who was, who was the, that at no, that time? No, Rabbi Barton Lee. He, oh, just, Rabbi passed, Bar Rabbi Lee, Rabbi he Lee. just passed away this year. Yes, I remember hearing that. He was from San Antonio, mm -hmm. and in the hottest weather, he wore a scarf. I said, Rabbi Lee, why are you doing that? He says, it's so much colder here than in San Antonio. <laughs> so he moved, he became the Hillel director at AS, uh, Arizona State University uh -huh. and had a wonderful career. Very okay. nice. So we kept flourishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife, she was the principal of the Hebrew school, right? Am yes, I right? Well, I had a problem with one of my associates, and Tamara was running a school uh, in uh, Deerfield, Hebrew school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I said, Tamara, you've got to help me. So she came over. Well, that's how she became principal. And they were all upset because it's going to interfere with your married life and uh, it's not going to work, you're going to fight. And I said, give us, a, give us a chance, okay? So I said to Tamar, Tamar, honey, you know that you run the house and I'm very happy that you run the house, but please allow me to run the Beit HaMikdash, okay? <laughs> so she said, okay. But she, you know, she, she was giving people all kinds of advice and things. I said, Tamar, you're not the rabbi here. She said, so, she, so she became the head of the school, and she was she was a mother to to the children. She so many people to told me what an influence she had on them.
growing up in Hebrew school at Temple Bethel, she would uh, take kids and sit with, with them. And we had uh, a family from the Holocaust, the Marbells, okay? Moshe Marbell and Rivka Marbell, who were the caretakers. And when we built the building on Tui, oh, on Palmer Square, we had a sh an old rickety house where the Marbells lived, okay? Mm -hmm. So I said, we're taking the Marbells with us, and we want an apartment for them in the, in the building. So they had an apartment. Uh -huh. And my kids would go up there because Mrs. Marbell would make them blintzes mm -hmm. and make them uh, moon keyhole mm -hmm. and make them happy. Uh, uh. And Mr. Marbell, he would blow the shofar. Uh, we, it was a mishpacha. It was a real shamus to the show. Oh, he was there and people loved him, by the uh. way. Uh, Dave Zeisman was the original uh, bond for Israel person mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, several of my congregants were involved with that. With Israel Bats. So they came to me and asked if we could have a bond drive. I said, given the history of the congregation. <laughs> they didn't want my star. I'm not so sure. <laughs> so I said, uh, let's try it. Let's try it. So our congregation was the first reformed congregation. To have an Israel bond dinner. Wow, wow, wow. And the sisterhood that saved the congregation during the Depression. I went to them. The sisterhood had a fund that was guarded with their lives, okay? And I went to them and said, I want the sisterhood to buy a bond, buy a bond for Israel. And Phil Klesnick, all of the Shalom, was the bond chairman in, in Chicago. So they said, we, we won't buy a bond unless Mr. Klesnick guarantees the, that we'll be able to get our money out. I said, ask Mr. Klesnick. So he was willing, okay, and they, this was the Rupert family, Dr. and Mrs. Rupert, um, and they organized this and had a committee and, and things. And then we had the two men, one was named Joe, uh, uh, I forgot, and the other one was Joe also, who were bar mitzvah at the temple in 1900. Oh my, oh. So they were the next group that we honored. Honored. Okay. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I want to stop you here because we're running out of time. Can we do a second show and continue this story? Because I want to finish up talking about Temple Bethel and I want to talk about Rabbi Victor Weisberg, which we haven't really talked about yet, and the history of you and your education. Um, so is that okay if we continue with another show? Sure. All right. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former shows on the web. If you want to email Rabbi Weisberg or myself, you can send it to us at info at tvrabbi.com. I'll forward it to him. I know he responds to everyone. And we hope to see you next time as we continue with Rabbi Victor Weisberg right here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.